Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of The Capitalist Investor. As always, you got Mark and you got Diamond Hands D. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? What's up, dude? <laughs> it's going to be your new nickname, Diamond Hands. I like Hands. it. Yeah. I, I love it, actually. It's good. It's good. I'm going to make stick. it stick. <laughs> that one is definitely sticking. Um, so look, man, this week we are going to be talking about Jeff Bezos, who mm -hmm. you know recently announced that he was going to be stepping down as Amazon's CEO. So I think it's it's you know fitting that we talk about kind of you know his career path, his mm -hmm. accomplishments, what he's going to be doing post Amazon. Um, but we also examine what this means for Amazon at the same time. Right. Right. Absolutely. Amazon is the second largest company in the in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's a holding in most of our clients' portfolios too. Right. You know. <laughs> so. Obviously, we want to make sure that the, you know this guy's a just an absolute genius. Mm -hmm. He's a mastermind, <laughs> um, and we want to make sure that Amazon's going to be healthy post exit. Absolutely. So, um, basically, uh, if we kind of look back over the last few weeks, the big announcement was that Jeff Bezos would be stepping down as CEO, and that he would become the executive chairman. Right. Right. Sounds like a sweet title. It does. Yeah. <laughs> like a cakewalk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and his successor is going to be Andy Jassy, who has been leading AWS, which mm. is their cloud division. Um, he's been leading that for, I don't know, I think he's been with the company for over 20 years. Yeah. He's been leading that. It is their most profitable division. The thing's constantly growing at like 30% year after year after year. They're the number one player in the cloud. So, it seems fitting that he takes over the reins. Right. Um, it seems like Bezos kind of stepped back a few years ago a little bit anyways, mm -hmm. right? So this sure. is really just a continuation of that. Um, so look, I think, you know, everything that's happened so far, I, I understand it. It's kind of the natural progression of a, of a leader or of a company, mm -hmm. right? This happened back when, when Bill Gates stepped down from Microsoft, right? right? So, you know, it's natural that this happens. And kind of if you think about it, D, um, Amazon is like a, I think their market cap is like roughly 1.7 trillion. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Second biggest after Apple. Apple's like 2.2 trillion. Right. Which blows my mind even more. Because Amazon is literally like everyone needs it to live <laughs> because nobody wants to drive to the grocery store. Nobody wants to drive to their local Walgreens or CVS. So you need Amazon and that's why you have packages on your front porch every day, every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Apple is like, it's more of a luxury, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's crazy that Apple is actually worth more than Amazon. Um, but they're both excellent companies, right. fantastic companies. So this is just kind of the natural progression. And if you think about it, like, what do you want a guy like Jeff Bezos doing? Do you want him, um, do you want him scouring over P&L statements, trying to figure out like where the money's going and where it should be going? Is that the best use of that dude's time? No, <laughs> definitely not. How about being a manager of managers? Is that the best use of that dude's time? No, probably not. Okay, how about sitting in a courtroom while Amazon is getting drilled by the DOJ for mm -hmm. antitrust issues. Is that the best use of his time? No. Exactly. So I think what happened is he just avoided all of those situations, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's a smart guy. <laughs> so in my opinion, you want a guy like Bezos, you want him innovating, yep. right? And that's mm -hmm. what you're going to get. He, he's gonna be able to step back from the day-to-day -day grind and focus on, obviously he's got other projects outside of Amazon, but he's also gonna be able to lend his input and expertise on the next paths for Amazon to enter an industry and completely disrupt that industry and turn it on its head. Right. I'd much rather have him doing that. <clears throat> that's, what, that's what he does. <laughs> and that's probably why, you know, after this news came out, Amazon stock didn't budge, Right. right? You know, I, I've 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 uh, thought about this for a while because um, it's obviously big news. But you know, actually, I was uh, scrolling through Twitter the other day, and I saw a picture of a mall 
<laughs> from like 1995. Yeah. And remember they used to like drive cars into the mall and, you know, display oh, them. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you could see, so you could, you know, you would see them, right? And, you know, back in, you know, our, you know, early high school days with the family, that was what we did, right? Yeah. We went to, went to the mall, we would oh, chop yeah. around. Hey, mom, look, there's a new car over there, right? <laughs> and that, <laughs> that was marketing, right? Um, and, and Jeff Bezos almost single handedly completely changed all of that. Yeah. Um, it's really pretty remarkable. And, you know, continuing down the, the, the stroll down memory lane. Yeah. You know, our, the name of our show is The Capitalist Investor. Um, this dude started this company out of his garage. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. It's funny because you got him starting it out <laughs> of his garage. You got Steve Jobs yep. starting out of his garage. Zuck started out of his college dorm. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing what these guys built out of their houses and dorms. Like it's, it's mind blowing. That's capitalism at its finest. Absolutely. That's what makes America the greatest country in the world is the fact that we have the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Now on the flip side, it sucks that the wealthy are being targeted, <laughs> right? Yeah. Cause it, you mean, you want, you want innovation. You want people to want to start businesses and be rewarded. That's right. what makes our country awesome. There's no question that, you know, Amazon, Apple, these places, they're, they're not going to start up in, you know, any other country besides the United States of America. Yep. Um, so, so I thought that was important. One fact I did not know, uh, Jeff Bezos, his uh, parents, actually his uh, mom and stepmom, uh, invested $250,000 into the startup. And this was back in 1994? Yes. Do you know Two, how much that is worth now? 250 each? 250 or, total. Total. All right, that's got to be worth 700 grand today? 700 grand? 250? Oh, no. So what so in Amazon stock, how much is oh, the, the you, stock? Oh, you tricked me. You tricked me. <laughs> you got the time value of money down. I I don't need to quiz you on that. <laughs> um, wow, how much is that worth? That's got to be worth like 10 billion. Yeah, they they they're saying about 30 billion dollars. Wow. Now it's not public information how much of that they have held on to. Correct, yeah. Um, but um that's pretty much the most risky investment that you can make. Investing and, in a startup? Yep. When some dude's running it in his underwear in his garage? <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. It's unbelievable. That's very risky. So, so yeah. So there, Turned out to be a good bet. There's a nice uh, story of, uh, you know, betting on, on your family and, and winning. Uh, so that, that was pretty cool. I found that. Um, the also, also, the other interesting fact, and then we'll get back on topic here. Um, Amazon wasn't the original name. Uh, he originally wanted to call it Kadabra, like Abracadabra. Wow. Just Kadabra. And the Sounds too much like cadaver. <laughs> did, Doesn't it? Did you, do you know the story? That's no, exactly I don't know what it. happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer heard cadaver and then they had to change it to Amazon because obviously yeah. cadaver isn't a good name for, yeah. for your online retailer. Um, so, so that's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but have you ever, have you ever watched the, uh, movie about McDonald's, uh, the not. founder? No, is that Ray Crockett? Yeah. I've it, never seen that. It, it's an awesome, awesome movie. But in, uh, in that movie at the end, um, yeah, he basically said, you know, every when he walked into the, the original McDonald's, cause he didn't start it. Um, you know, they were basically doing the assembly line at this restaurant yeah. and that was a great idea. They were serving all these people, but he said, you know, the, the thing that really drove, drove me to this business was the name McDonald's, right? It, it yeah. just, it just works. Yeah. Amazon, whatever, for, for whatever reason, it just works. It works. Um, so good, good move on the name change there. Yeah. Uh, I would say so. <laughs> Cause it works, right? It's just, you know, Amazon. Yeah. It's, it's it, it just works. Yes. Yep, and and it's very important uh, the name I think of your online retailer even nowadays, when you look at something like Zoom. Yep. Right. Zoom is that that is, is like Kleenex. It it it's, 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 it's the brand name. It's become a verb. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and the mm. kind of the same. I mean, may, I don't know. I don't hear many people saying I'm going to go Amazon this. Right. I don't know that Amazon's a verb, but Zoom 100 percent has become a verb. Mm. Yeah. Right. I got his, I'm going to zoom this dude later, yep, exactly. right? Like it's mm -hmm. become a verb. So it, it's a household name. Amazon's a household name. Zoom has become a household name. Um, 
That's crazy, Kadabra. What a terrible, <laughs> terrible name. That's an awful name. God. Um, all right, so we didn't even mention this. I know we've mentioned this in past episodes, but just a reminder to everyone that when this was started in Jeff Bezos's garage in 1994, they were just selling books. Right. And they basically put all the bookstores out of business doing this, <laughs> yeah. right? And then they kind of expanded their offerings to other retail items. Yep. Basically, um, actually, I found this out researching when he originally came up with the idea. Um, there was some report that he read that, um, you know, the, the potential future growth of online retailers was like 23,000% or something like that. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, everyone sees stuff like that and, you know, is that, is that actually going to work? But, you know, in this case, it actually did work. Yeah. Um, but he identified uh, compact discs, computer hardware and software and books. Those were, were, those were the things that he originally targeted to, to sell online. Very, very impressive what he did with the company. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's kind of shift gears towards uh, Andy Jassy, the new CEO as of, I think, the third quarter of mm -hmm. this year is when that'll go into effect. Yep. Is that right? Yes. All right, so a little background on Andy Jassy. Um, he currently runs AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Like I said earlier, um, it's a division that's growing at like 30% mm -hmm. year after year after year. They are the number one player in the cloud and it is Amazon's most profitable division. Yep. You know, so um, Andy Jassy was really responsible for Amazon disrupting the cloud. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a great selection. He's been with the company for over 20 years. Um, let's kind of look at a little bit of his personal background. Mm-hmm. So he's 53, uh, went to Harvard, graduated in 1990 from Harvard University and then Harvard Business School in 1997. And then he went straight to Amazon after Harvard. So I don't know what Amazon was like in 1997, but I would imagine um, it, it was still a very, very small startup company at that point in time. Yep. Do you have any idea off the top of your head when they went public? Um, it's not off the top of my head, but I have it right here. May 12th. Uh, nope. Sorry. It is, uh, 1996. 96. And I want to say they went public for just a few hundred million of market cap, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I apologize. They announced it in 96. They actually went public on May 15th, 1997, $18 a share. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, if you bought then, you're uh, you're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like thirty three hundred bucks right now. It's almost as good as Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. What is that, anyways? It's the the coin with the dog on it. I know. <laughs> it's worth like nine cents now. I was really surprised to learn that Snoop Dogg wasn't involved in that. Yeah, seriously. Why? Talk about marketing. Exactly. Jeez. Why is he not like on commercials for that stuff? <laughs> All right, we digress. All right, so. Um, Jassy, like I said, he's been with Amazon forever. He's part of like that key inner circle, mm -hmm. right? I guess Bezos called that inner circle the S team. Um, and now if you look at AWS, AWS on a revenue basis, it's like, depending on the quarter, like 10 to 15% of Amazon's total revenues. Mm -hmm but it accounts for 60% of Amazon's profit. Right. Like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And we, we should mention, we, we haven't mentioned this as we were kind of given the, the overview of how far Amazon has come. Uh, but Amazon just this last quarter eclipsed a hundred billion in revenues for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And they didn't just eclipse it, they blew through it. <laughs> They're 125 billion of revenues. Yep. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. So huge company, um, now worth 1.7 trillion. D, what are your thoughts uh, on this transition, like in the short term, in the long term? What do you think the impact is going to be on Amazon? <clears throat> so you know, I think, I think kind of the market reaction is pretty much what I think <laughs> of the the short term changes, which is basically nothing. Um, we're still. In, in my opinion, not much further along in getting out of this pandemic than, than we first started. Yep. 
Um, everyone's going to continue to Amazon everything right to right oh, to yeah. their door. There, you used um, it as a verb. <laughs> there you there go. You go. <laughs> it is a verb. So so yeah, you know, short term, um, I don't think it's going to uh, affect it too much. And longer term, I think we've already kind of ceased. Uh, we've already kind of seen this play out in a different company with Apple. Yeah. Um, because Tim Cook um, basically um, took the, he, he is a, a straight CEO, right? He is just in charge of making this company as profitable as possible. Yep. The, when Steve Jobs had to step aside, um, everyone was really worried about innovation. Um, and turns out that they were still able to innovate when you got a gazillion dollars in the bank. <laughs> and if you can, yeah. you can just buy it. And, and I don't even know that it was as much them innovating as it has been Apple executing. Mm -hmm. He's, I look at Tim Cook, maybe not, he's not the innovator that Steve Jobs was, but he executes. That's the perfect word for it. And he's improved the execution of building iPhones, distributing iPhones, um, marrying all of the devices together through the Apple ecosystem. Right. Could you ever get rid of your iPhone? No, you're, that's funny. I was just Everything's thinking about connected, that. Everything's connected, dude. Because mm -hmm. that new uh, Samsung, like foldable phone, yeah. it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, but, but you would lose the entire ecosystem exactly. that you've been building <laughs> for over a decade. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're stuck with them forever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Apple... It looks like their most of their revenue is one-time revenue, but in actuality, most of it is probably <laughs> recurring revenue. Yes, for because sure. Because it's like selling cigarettes. Mm -hmm. but that's recurring revenue. <laughs> people are addicted, mm -hmm. right? They keep buying them. Now, yep. fortunately, people are smoking less and less. You know, <laughs> but it is it's comparable to that. Yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, short term. Look, I obviously the stock hasn't really budged mm -hmm. on the news. Um, how do you, like, as we kind of look forward over the next several years, you mentioned Tim Cook, you mentioned Steve Jobs. Um, do you think Amazon will still have the opportunity to enter and disrupt new industries? Or do you think they're just going to work on kind of perfecting what they've already grown? Well, you know, the, the cloud business, I don't think the average person on the street realizes how big it is for Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and I also don't think the average investor out there knows kind of the details of why, you know, people like us would like the stock. It has a lot more to do with the cloud business and the, the, the reoccurring revenue and the opportunity that that presents versus, you know, what everyone knows, right? Everyone's just ordering packages as fast as they can. Right. Um, so I think, um, I think whatever team is in place with the resources and the company that they have already built, I think they'll be able to carry that forward. Um, I don't want to say with little problem, but I think they'll be able to do it, um, and continue to be effective at perfecting the markets that they've broken into and finding new ones to get into yeah. as well. I agree. Um, I think this is probably, just to kind of wrap up our thoughts here, I think this is probably a net positive for Amazon. Mm -hmm. And that's not discounting anything that Bezos has done or will do, but I think it's just giving him, like, look, we walked in to do this podcast and I'm like, I have no mental energy left to do this right now <laughs> because I've just been doing TV shows. And as soon as I get out of the studio, I've got a Zoom meeting followed by another Zoom meeting, right? So mm -hmm. like I could use <laughs> so, some, some time for me to kind of focus on those key activities mm -hmm. that are most profitable for strategic wealth partners. Right. So I think that's actually what this is going to give Amazon and Bezos the ability to do is not get distracted by the day-to-day -day noise, but rather focus on the stuff that's really going to drive innovation, the stuff that's really going to disrupt, the thing that's going to make Amazon relevant for the next 20 plus years, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's, as I say that, it's, it's interesting because Bezos, a few years ago, he made a comment that eventually Amazon will go bankrupt. 
And he didn't say that because Amazon's a poorly run company. He said that's just the natural progression of our world is that new disruptors will come out and completely replace those companies that existed years ago. And that's exactly what he did to, to brick and mortar retailers. Absolutely. Right? That was exactly what was swimming around in my brain right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll get into something that we haven't even thought of yep. yet. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So um, thanks everyone for joining us on today's show. We appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, email us info at swpconnect.com. Give us a five-star review. Check out the show notes. Check out the YouTube channel. Um, tell your friends about us. You know, we love to grow our audience. Make sure you tell your friends about us. Hit the subscribe button and keep tuning in week after week. We appreciate it. And we do enjoy, even though I have no mental energy left today, <laughs> we do enjoy talking with you week after week after week and sharing our latest thoughts. With that, we will see you next week.